Welcome to Toyota Time with Timmy the Toolman and Sean. And we got a special guest today. He's our buddy Marcus. We're over here at his shop at A&D Auto Works and we're going to show you how to do the specific modifications you'll need to do to install an aluminum radiator, a champion aluminum radiator. We're not going to show you everything that's involved with taking it out and putting it back in. We do have another video and if you click on the link above you'll be able to see how to remove your radiator, install a radiator, and even do a trans cooler like Marcus has. But what we are going to show you in this video is the necessary things you need to do to make this radiator fit. Champion Radiators advertise this as being a plug and play direct bolt on for the third generation Toyota 4Runners. But our buddy on T4R.org, Sleepy Dad, also has a YouTube channel under his name, Andy, and he was the first one that, I, that we know of to actually install this and he ran into some pitfalls and he shares a video of his pitfalls. So we're going to follow his lead and we're going to try to show you some of the things that we have done to actually make this work in your third generation Toyota 4Runner. At first glance, everything seems to be in the same exact location as the OEM radiator, upper radiator bung, the lower radiator, um, both transmission cooler lines, and even the drain. Um, same as the Champion radiator. Um, you know, they went a little fancy. Uh, when you do get the radiator, you will have to install these cooler nipple type things. There aren't any torque specs that they give you, so I guess go with your best judgment, good and tight. Okay, how good and tight. You will also notice how much thicker the Champion radiator cooler is compared to the factory radiator. Um, it does have a larger coolant capacity over um, the factory radiator. So with the fan shroud on the factory radiator, I'll just hold it up. It does get a nice flush fitment, um, no gap, as you can see. Now, if I put it on the Champion radiator, you will notice there is a gap. And I've actually taken some material off of the top to get it a little closer. Unfortunately, the this top casing is just so much wider than the actual radiator here, especially with these welds, that it will just not allow me to get it nice and flush. Um, I'd have to take off, you know, a pretty decent amount of the shroud, which I don't really want to do, which is one of the first things Andy noticed. I'm not going to worry about, you know, this, this small gap here. It's not too big of a concern for me personally. The fan will still be able to operate as normal. Just like our OEM radiators, it comes with these hooks that allow you to put the radiator in place um, and maybe grab uh, the hardware or whatever. So you don't have to worry about the radiator just kind of falling down. This radiator do, did come with them, and Andy, when he got his radiator, they're actually both completely bent the opposite way. Luckily, when I got my radiator, they were facing the proper direction, just like the OEM radiator. However, they were positioned to be a lot wider than it is right now. And I found that I had to completely bend the hook to where it was completely straight out instead of slowly curving out. When I did that, I was able to get both of them in the uh, radiator support kind of guide holes. But as I went to bolt it down, the width of, of, the, of these points is just way too wide. So I had to completely bend this the opposite direction in order to get the radiator nice and flush and how it's supposed to be. Um, I left that side, I left that hook alone because that still allows me to at least get the radiator in place and held for the most part. Something that you will have to modify to get this radiator to work. So Champion uses these nut certs. Andy uh, thought of a, a good idea to, uh, he thinks they, they can be a, a flaw potentially down the road if they were ever to get through. So he knocked these out and replaced it with just a regular bolt and a nylon locking nut on the back. I'm kind of just gonna leave it how it is, but it is an option. So I picked up these rubber bushings from Lowe's. The reason I picked them up is because Andy had advised us that it'd be a good idea to put some kind of a rubber in between this radiator and the radiator support 
um, just to give it some kind of flex and we all love flex just because with this radiator completely against the support um, and if there's any flex on that support it can cause possibly the radiator to crack so this will give it at least some kind of free movement on the OEM radiator it does have this component that I've disassembled pretty much a washer goes in between here and gets sandwiched and this allows this to flex which will prevent the radiator from cracking on some kind of an impact. And on this side, if you look, there is, it, this does allow the radiator to have some flex. Another thing that's required for both the radiator to be bolted to the support and even the fan shroud to be bolted to this radiator, you will need longer hardware. So the OEM bolt is pretty short as it is. It's hard to see but the threads kind of start really deep in these nut certs. Um, and when you combine that with this rubber bushing, it's kind of a stretch to get these OEM bolts to fit. So I went ahead and got a longer replacement at Lowe's. You're going to need a longer replacement for both the radiator and to bolt the fan shroud to this radiator. So pretty much what I'm gonna run is um, a longer bolt which is an M8 1.25. I was not able to get a shorter bolt. They're um, sold out so kind of going with what I got here. And I will pretty much run these washers on the outside, the radiator support, and then I will add the rubber bushing and then after that it will go directly into the radiator. Damn, this thing must have got bent when we had it out. So for the most part, it lined up pretty good, other than this top right corner. I had to widen the hole with a, a Dremel. If you knock those nut shirts out and put bolts, you might be able to avoid having to do this if you don't want to modify your radiator support at all which is what Andy did. I'm gonna start with the lock washer and uh, the regular washer um, through the radio support. After the radio support, I will add this rubber bushing um, and then it will go directly into the radiator itself. So obviously, as you can see, you could definitely go with a shorter bolt. I kind of had to go with what I had. They didn't have anything shorter, um, unfortunately. So this is a 35, um, just to get an idea of the length. So if you can get a shorter one, it's not too big of a deal. I mean, obviously I still have tons of room and um, you know, it's not gonna hit or interfere with anything other than, you know, me knowing that it's, too long. Yeah, that's not going anywhere. So for the fan shroud, you are going to need a longer bolt. Uh, my fan shroud is showing its age. You know, these, a lot of these tabs are cracked and broken. So I had to throw a larger washer just to get a better clamp. Uh, this is the factory one. Um, it's really short, small washer, and it's just not even close to reaching uh, with this radiator.
one thing to notice is the skid plate is closer uh, on this radiator. The bottom and top plates for this radiator are thicker than the OEM radiator, which causes the clearance to be closer. Um, I'm sure the skid plate was designed for the factory radiator. Um, so it is closer. This is a Savage skid. So, um, you know, it's gonna really vary depending on which skid plate you're running, um, how close uh, the fabricator designed the radiator skid to be. Um, so that's just another thing to keep in mind. What up, it's Mark Tech, we're back. It's been three months since I've installed this radiator. I've had a chance to go on two trails since then, Coral Hollow and Signal Peak. Signal Peak is in Tahoe, Coral Hollow is near Arnold. And I drive it every day, almost every day. So um, I've had a good idea of what it's gonna, the temperature is what they're like daily driving and on the trail. I've noticed daily driving, the temperature is the same as my factory radiator, but off-road is where I saw the, the real performance of it. Oftentimes I would see 200, 200 plus uh, temperature with my OEM radiator. With this radiator, it's kind of staying 198 max is the highest I've seen so far. It's never gone past that, which I'm pretty happy about. Champion states that it is a plug and play radiator. As you can see from this video, and if you refer to the other person who's reviewed this radiator, it is not a plug and play exactly. It does require some modification. It wasn't that much of a pain in my opinion. If I had to do it again, I would. All right, I wanna give a big thanks to Mark Tech over here for helping us out with this project and letting us tag along see what his experience has been and it looks like so far so good right definitely a sick mod all right sick mods when we started this video champion was the only company that made aluminum radiators and since then koyo has also come out with their own version now it's so new we can't talk much about it since we haven't experienced it what we know so far is that it might not have a trans cooler built in so keep that in mind if you're going that route the reason you want to install an aftermarket radiator is to hopefully reduce engine temps. The way you monitor these engine temps is something like a scan gauge or maybe an app on your phone via a Bluetooth OBD2 reader. The reason you want to monitor your engine temps is so that you can prevent any catastrophic damage. So if you pull over before you get to critical temperatures, then you're not going to experience a potential failure somewhere. So the needle on the dash cluster where the speedometer is, is only going to warn you when you get into a critical temperature, whereas the scan gauge or some app on your phone is actually going to give you a lot more accurate data so you can make a better decision if you need to pull over and let the engine cool down for a little bit. With all that said, thanks for watching Timmy the Tool Man and Sean. We'll be back with more videos. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. If you have any questions or comments, do that below. And we'll be back with more sick mods, like the sick radiator mod. Let's see how it is real quick. It's still going. All right, it's still going. Yeah. Is that YouTube? Yeah. Yep. See you at YouTube. <laughs>